Welcome back to the CNBC TV 18 special. We are in conversation with Mr. Nachiket Moore. Mr. Moore, let's just continue with the conversation we were having. The other issue with healthcare today is also the wide disparity in services between a public hospital and a private hospital. And uh, we are, of course, in the wake of the horrifying news we're getting of innocent kids dying in hospitals. Where, you know, when you look at stories like these, where do you think the problem really lies? And, and are we years away from actually offering basic services to, you know, to our people? The healthcare is a complicated area. It's not possible to tell you that there is a quick ABC solution. What is indeed possible to say, though, that India does have all of the capacities that it needs to address this problem. We make all of the essential medicines in country, generic medicines, at a low cost. We make more than half the global supply of vaccines that the Gavi uses, for example. Uh, we have some of the finest uh, medical colleges that are able to produce some outstanding physicians. Uh, we have very good nursing capabilities in the country. Uh, and we have enormous technological capabilities. So there's no fundamental barrier. And as a country, while one could argue we should spend more money, at 5% of GDP, it's not as if we are completely uh, away from what is required to be done. The challenges are, how do we organize all of this in a way that delivers the services when needed in a high quality, consistent way? And this is where we have to speak about all the various aspects of what is going on. Financing, we spoke about a little while earlier. right? Should people be required, which they are today, that if they have an emergency, they need to find the money from somewhere, mm -hmm. all of that 3 lakh, 5 lakh rupees, to pay for the services? I would argue to you, no. We, we will have to fix that problem. There is, India is now one amongst the few countries in which people are carrying wads of cash around when they need to seek services. Most countries have figured out a mechanism by which everybody either pays a certain amount, like we spoke about ESIS, mm -hmm. or gets it via tax. So therefore, it's a free service that is made available to them. Mm -hmm. Human resources is a continuing challenge. Right? We don't have enough specialists. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough nurses. And even if we do have people, they're not distributed in the right places. You know, we need them in rural India, we need them in... There are a number of solutions that are possible. If I go, for example, to Alaska, and I ask the question, who provides the bulk of dental services? They don't, they're not able to persuade dentists to come. It's a difficult, hostile environment. They use dental hygienists to do it. In rural Nebraska, doctors will not come. Nurses and nurse practitioners are providing those services. Mm. Thailand is an outstanding health system very much a developing country like us, right? They have used nursing cadres mm -hmm. that they have recruited from ground up and graduated them up to a level to build a health system. Mm -hmm. All this is eminently possible for us to do. Mm -hmm. We have adequate young people that are interested in these careers. We have adequate training capability to actually mm -hmm. offer these services to put together. My belief is that, you know, the challenge for us uh, is to assemble these solutions in a consistent way so that we can actually offer these services when they are needed, in a timely manner, in an adequate capacity. What is the role of the private sector in this regard? Um, I mean, and how do you see uh, you know, private sector playing a role in actually sort of changing the lives and making an impact on the ground? I would argue to you that the government needs to harness all capabilities as it deems fit for uh, you know whatever the requirement is. Clearly for public health, if I ask you the question, vaccinations, you know, uh, uh, malaria control, dengue control, um, kala azar control, government will have to take the primary role of both financing it as well as getting it done. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. this requires a level of consistent effort mm -hmm. over years, uh, that and it's a core public health function. Right. I would argue to you, very mm -hmm. few countries around the world are ones in which the government is not performing this role mm -hmm. directly. 
Mm -hmm. right? It may use the private sector as a contractor in some places, okay. but otherwise it really performs this role mm -hmm. directly. But once you move beyond that to actual provision of healthcare services, mm -hmm. my own belief is that we would need a lot more eclectic uh, approaches uh, to come up, mm -hmm. uh, to figure out uh, what is the right answer. You know, since uh, you know, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, one of the most preeminent uh, organizations doing this kind of work, uh, you know, we've seen government also trying to, uh, you know, sort of tighten the work of NGOs. We've seen, as far as renewal of FCRA licenses are concerned, has that at all impacted the work that you do on the ground? No. This is, uh, you know, clearly uh, the way we work is that we work with organizations that have uh, regulatory approvals, um, and if the government, in its wisdom, decides that you know, there are issues that they need to address. Uh, we wait until those things are cleared up before we are able to engage with them. We have certainly not seen a material impact. Uh, the odd project might get delayed, some issue might get a little bit, uh, we might need to re-examine if, you know, a particular partner that we were working with uh, either has a delay or has a cancellation. But if you ask me on a national basis, have I seen an impact on our work? Najiket Moore, pleasure speaking with you and thank you and wish you all the luck with all the good work that you're doing. Thank you very much for taking our time and joining us here. Thank you very much. Lovely to talk to you. Thank you.